Hi, my name is Ashley Clark Ray, and this film is especially for hearing parents of deaf children. This video is an interview with a deaf football coach who strongly believes that deaf children should go to schools for the deaf. In the interview, we discuss the deaf schools, their pros and their cons. I hope this video helps you make a decision for your deaf child and their education. Before I show this video interview, I will first show you a video clip from the football game two years ago. It's a deaf football coach and his team on national television. It's very cool. I want to show it to you. I hope you enjoy this video. To eight in October. I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that makes you so proud that you work work there when you see stuff like that that we did tonight. Known for their up tempo offense, Spezio Harmount now. He, he does it on the ground, and he does it through the air. He's got nine touchdown catches coming in. He's got one on the ground there. They need only three plays, 47 seconds to get on the board. Weren't done yet. Next possession, Jax Peterson drops the snap, picks it up. Multiple defenders had a shot at him, but he's going to go 44 yards on third and long. Eagles going with the hurry up. Peterson getting his guys up to the line. Going to hand off to Kalo Arambolas, 14-year-old freshman, rumbles into the end zone. More of the same for CSD Fremont, 94 yards and a buck 35. 29 nothing, but still focused. Yeah, guys, what you're seeing right now is the post-game uh, huddle, the celebration here. All the fans come down on the field after the game. They are surrounding the team. They are surrounding the coach. Warren Keller, the victorious coach, is with our own Quinn Kessnick. Q. Thanks, Kevin. Coach, congratulations. This, this game had a lot of buildup and, and hype for a long time. Uh, how did your team deal with that early in this game? Oh, man, you see the kids are so excited about me. They're behind me. I mean, it's the kids' game. I just make it a good game. They make it a good game plan. They're just following through. I'm just a good thing it didn't rain earlier. It held off until the fourth quarter. And uh, I'm, I'm just appreciated because we needed to pass the ball. So, I mean, it was a smooth game plan. I think the kids executed well, and they gave the good sportsmanship. They represented our community well. What are you most proud of? Uh, the, that we represented the deaf community well. It gave a lot of deaf schools all over the U.S. They, they are good football teams. And if you're watching this game right now and you're deaf and you're in, a, in your mainstream school, think about going to a deaf school. You said the other day, we don't do anything different from any other football team. Uh, you, in actuality, I, I think you do it better uh, with, with, with discipline uh, and with focus. How would you best describe the way you operate on offense tonight? We execute. We execute perfection. We're smooth. Our offense is tough. We have a lot of formations. We have a lot of plays that wasn't easy, but we put the, but they put the work to it. Thank you, Coach. Tremendous spirit here, Kevin. Quinn, thank you. Thanks to Coach. An emotional night. A beautiful night here in Fremont. It's a pretty darn good football, too. 43-0. The Eagles win it here in the Bay Area. Stan and Neil, back to you. Hi there. I'm here with Warren Keller. Yes, hi there. He's the athletic director and head football coach here at the School for the Deaf in Fremont. So, well, thanks for coming here. I appreciate it. Oh, sure. Thanks for taking your time. So I see that you are on national television. So how did that happen? Well, it was a fast year. It was about a year ago with basketball. A lot had occurred via this last year. But how it happened was a buildup of what had happened with the program prior to that year. I started coaching, well, seven years, so five years prior to that. Uh, the team started playing uh, tougher teams like Richmond High School. And now Richmond High School was on the schedule at the very last minute because they needed a game. Um, that's the, where the movie Coach Carter came from, that basketball movie. You know, that team was a big school, very tough opponent, large-sized people, and we beat them. You know, we were on Sports Illustrated, um, on the news, and that was a nice buildup. And it happened to be that year, there, we knew that we had a good team and an opportunity with ESPN coming up. We couldn't say no, so we took the opportunity. You know, they knew about ESPN. That was the ninth game. So I was hoping that the whole year we wouldn't have any injuries or any other issues. I didn't want the kids to lose that opportunity in that moment. So we had a great year. We were 8-1. and one, And we, um, yeah, it was fantastic. What a great night, as you know. And after that was great for the deaf community, for the football program at the Schools for the Deaf, seeing that a lot had happened here over this last year. Wow, I can just remember being uh, seeing you on TV. And you'd said something that at the end of that game, when you won, and at the end of that interview, you stated that if you watch this and you're deaf and you think about going to the deaf school, 
obviously you think that deaf kids should go to a school for the deaf, and why do you think that's important? Well, you know, I said to my players that entire week, this is more than football, this is more than a game. We'll never have a three-hour, uh, you know, deaf event on TV again. And so use this as a platform, as a stage to show what it looks like at the School for the Deaf. There's nothing better to show what Fremont can look like than this event. And the hope is have a good attitude, play hard, play right. You know, if you have an opportunity to talk, talk about the school. Talk about, uh, you know, what it's like to be deaf. And players had that opportunity prior to the game, which is great. I had the opportunity at the end of the game. You know, I didn't want to talk about the game because it was a great game. But I wanted to focus on what many hearing parents don't know. They don't see what a school for deaf looks like. They've never seen it before. So I'm hoping that made an impact going forward. You know, I noticed that you had mentioned to me many people had called you and asked you questions. You know, is there anything more on enrollment? Has that increased? Well, the school enrollment is pretty stable, but I did notice that the football players uh, has grown. But it's not just about California, but ESPN, you know, and the world. You know, other schools of the deaf say football players have joined their program. They're seeing an increase in the game itself, which is great. So hopefully that is something that can help us going forward. You know, the idea is we lost this group of students. We have a large, large group coming in this fall. We hope to continue this going forward. Well, obviously you think that deaf kids should go to a deaf school. So why is that important? Why do you think that's important? Well, I think kids learn not just all day long, but 90% is incidental learning. So teachers are important, of course, interacting directly with the teacher, maybe with the interpreter a little less, but you know, you get a decent education, of course, but there's that whole interacting, social peers, the evening, the cottages, the organizations they can join. That can't be replaced at a hearing school. You can never get that equal experience as a school for the deaf. So I grew up in both environments. And so I know for myself that it's just validated that schools for the deaf are wonderful and it provides a great opportunity, you know, and give that answer with no doubt in my mind. Okay, so you've experienced both mainstream programs and schools for the deaf. Which do you prefer? Well, they both have their pros and cons. Mainstream schools are often close to home, where schools for the deaf are typically far away. However, the pros in the school for the deaf are so long. I was at the school for the deaf for three years. I wished it was more. I know I could never replace those years to play at the school for the deaf. I was a quarterback for a hearing team. I was the only deaf person with an interpreter. My playing time was less. Communication was blocked. It was a good, I had good moments, of course. You know, kids on the team learned how to fingerspell, which felt good for me. But I felt uh, barriers. At the School for the Deaf, you know, it was a huge experience. At Gallaudet, I was there for five years. So that was in me as well. I wish it was more. I wish it was more at the School for the Deaf. But they have their pros and cons, but the deaf school is definitely more pros. What would you say is cons on School for the Deaf? Well, the big common element, it's far from home. And yes, but remember that learning occurs all hours. You know, socializing with peers, in the cottages, with the dorm parents. You can't replace, you know, that, of course. There's weekends with families, and some families, you know, move closer to the school for their kids. You know, how many would you say? Well, here we have about 450 students. I'd say about 300 in the dorms. Uh, 150 are, are uh, day commuters, and that's my assumption, so two-thirds are in the cottages. How many parents do you think move in closer to the school? Maybe move. Not many. Not many. It's a lot of money to move. You know, it's hard to find work, changing your lifestyle. Yes, I know a couple of parents are willing to do that for their deaf child. You know, that says a lot about that family, what they want what's best for their kid and the best for their education. And there's a few that move in, uh, you know, and it feels good for them because it makes a big sacrifice for their child. They know what's best for their, chi their kids. Now, when parents, um, you know, for kids that go home on the weekends, do parents typically sign with families or are most not? I'd say about half and half. Those that don't sign are hoping that families are educated here at school. Yes, we have classes here. Some can't make that, and we provide tools for them uh, to work at home. Some of them interact with their kids, and some of them, you know, are Mexican, and they're doing Spanish, so it's a little harder with, a, you know, trilingual. You know, I know at schools for the deaf, whether it's mainstream. I feel like, um, well, for me, my opinion is that schools for the deaf don't always guarantee that you'll be successful upon graduation. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I do. Everyone has their own experience through their upbringing. Some didn't learn language till later in life. Some have some learning difficulties, so not everyone's the same. Schools for the deaf, you know, just because they didn't achieve just as, doesn't mean that there's a failure, if you will. But recognizing that those who are brought up at a school for the deaf have a better chance for success. 
They have more exposure to language at a much earlier age. Many of those who aren't successful are brought in later in life to the school for the deaf. No, obviously better late than never, come play sports, get involved in organizations. But those that didn't get brought up here come in langer, later and maybe are a little bit behind with language. And that's where schools for the deaf get a bad rap because kids are brought here later on. Oh, I never really thought about that. Yeah, wow. Not everyone here was, was here from the beginning. Maybe only a quarter of them are here from the start. So the best is to catch up as, with your language as soon as you can, with your writing and English, etc. You know, it's a big debate in the educational field. I think what really, well, I think what's very important for hearing parents to, you know, get involved in their child's life. Don't just uh, leave it to the schools. Because I think that's, you know, you know what I'm saying? I do. You know, a, kid, a kid's mind is like a sponge. They're going to learn quickly. And the older they get, the less chance of that to happen. It can happen, but, you know, teaching an old dog new tricks, if you will. But a kid's mind is a sponge. You want to expose them to language all day and all night. And at the school, there's activities in the weekends and all that can be categorized. But not all deaf schools are good, like here at Fremont, correct? Well, you could say that. But I still strongly believe kids should go to schools for the deaf, really. Yeah, because the programs... You know, it takes one to start. You can't just wait, you know, until everyone else comes in in building this. And, you know, this idea, this cognitive gathering. So, you know, you've got teachers, more deaf staff. You've got some hearing, of course, but, okay, the opportunities for deaf. Yes, yeah, so you need everyone to start. It can't be just the same good big school. Small schools also need support as well. That's a good point. You know, coming from a small school myself, like Rochester School for the Deaf, I had a great experience there. You know, they didn't have football. Here they do. You know, unfortunately, I stopped playing, but I played other sports. And I learned so much there. Great staff, great teachers, great dorm parents, about 140 students. But again, I can't replace that experience. Small schools can be great schools. Yeah, you know, I feel like the deaf school here, kids have more opportunity to do more. And a mainstream program is not as much. For example, like basketball. They have a, we have a deaf team with a deaf coach and deaf everything. That's a very cool opportunity. Mainstream doesn't have that. I wish that I had that opportunity myself. You know, I always enjoy watching basketball because the direct communication, you're close up, you can see everything, players talking to each other, talking to their coach, having their little meetings, you can see it. With football, everything's further away, you don't see it all. Um, but in basketball, you're up close, there's that sort of environment. We sh I should have had that growing up. You know, I can just see what's going on, I can see what I maybe missed or didn't miss, and it's great. I you know, hey, you know, rather than speaking, move right. It's the right signs with the right group with the, in the deaf school, you know. So with kids here, they're very fortunate. Sometimes kids don't realize, you know, what they're doing and, and, and how fortunate they are to be here. You know, that's very cool. What's your word of advice to hearing parents who are watching this video now? What advice do you have? You know, it's the same as we talked about last year. You know, hoping you, you'll make a move. You'll do your research, you'll visit a school, talk to people around you, your friends. You know, make that push and get that move to get your son or your daughter to a school for the deaf. And one move will cause more to go on from there. And this last year, we've had fantastic stories of change with Niall DeMarco and a whole lot of other deaf people we can talk about. But the time is coming, you know, make that move and go there. I wish there was more schools for the deaf uh, around. For example, like in San Diego. It'd be so great. But they don't have one. But if they did have one in San Diego, I probably would have went to the School for the Deaf, but I didn't. Um, my parents didn't want me to go to Riverside or to Fremont, so it would have been so nice, and hopefully down the road there will be more School for the Deaf founded. Well, distance is probably the biggest downside. It's trying to find a way, whether you move or even if you're in high school living in the dorms or cottages, um, there is a way. Again, you want to, there's a way to make this work. So I hope this is helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching.